My name is Richard Farron, F-A-R-O-N. Right. I was born in New York in Queens, ah. in a little hamlet called St. Albans. Right. Um, I grew up there. I, uh, I then moved around Long Island as my family moved. Obviously, I had to go with them. And uh, when I was about, I was just shy of 18 years of age, um, not being able to get a job. Mm. I volunteered to be drafted into the Army. Um, if you're not familiar with that, I could give you a little explanation, but um, I didn't want to be regular Army because it was a three-year uh, duration, and I, I, I really didn't want to stay in for three years. Anyway, on, on top of that, I thought I would be 4 rep. 4 rep? Four rep. Four rep. Four rep was a category whereby they wouldn't take you in. Uh -huh. You had something wrong with you medically, physically, mm -hmm. whereby you couldn't perform what services they wished you to perform. Obviously, shooting a gun was one of them. Okay, I happen to be blind in my right eye. I was blind in my right eye when they drafted me. Ooh. And when I say blind, I was blind to the extent that I was unable to fire a weapon with my right eye, which is, of course, almost necessary. So they taught me, make a long story short, they taught me how to fire left-handed when I went to basic training. And there was never any quarrel about it, they just summarily put me in. Mm. And they didn't ask me anything about my eyes, etc. And I thought that point was important because I didn't expect to ever go in and be a career. <laughs> mm. I didn't know a lot about career, nor mm. knew anybody I know. Um, and then you asked me, uh, uh, well, I'm 80 years old now. What, what's the year that you were born? I was born in 1932. 1932. Right, December 24th, yeah. 1932. Yeah. Right. So it was 18 years old when you first hear about the breakout of Korean War? Well, no, I had heard about it, but I didn't know a great deal about it. Uh, I wasn't a student of it. All right, so I, my exposure was the newspaper. But back then we didn't have much TV, so it was a radio. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was always a sports enthusiast, so I wasn't listening to much radio. <laughs> I was doing sports. So you were a student when you first heard about the Korean War? Oh yes, I was a high school student. High school student. Yes, I was a high school student. What was your first reaction about the Korean War? You, did, you said that you, you were not aware of where Korea was and so on, right? Well, no, I didn't know where Korea was oh, okay. because I knew that the, I knew that you, know, you were occupied by the Japanese. I think it's back so from 1904. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about that. I learned that in history. I probably one of the only things I learned in history. Okay, but uh, more than that, I just knew where it was. That it was adjacent to Japan mm -hmm. and uh, small country. Uh, divided, well, actually we were divided in two then, I don't believe, I don't have a good recollection of that. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we were one country back when the Korean War started, mm -hmm. before you were physically divided. Anyway, um, then I went to a little, a little place called Fort Chaffee, Arkansas, uh, Arkansas, with all due respect to the hellhole of the earth, <laughs> bad place. Yeah, I didn't like it that way. Anyway, I was there four months. I was uh, infantry and World Five Howitzers artillery. And when was that? Nineteen fifty. That was nineteen fifty, early nineteen fifty-two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then after that, that was four months. Four months of basic training. Then I was uh, given a one-week leave. And then I was shipped to Tacoma, Washington, right, Fort Lewis, from where I departed. And two weeks later, after on the ocean, <laughs> mm -hmm. landed in Sasebo, Japan, and then trash shipped from there, there to Incheon. When was that exactly when you first arrived in Korea? Oh, I knew you would ask me that. Mm -hmm. And exactly. Just is, approximately. Um, let's see. I have to backtrack a little bit here. Um, four months after I went in, I went in in uh, 
October 52, so that would have been January 53. January 53. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so you were in the Army Infantry, right? Uh, I was in the Army uh, Artillery. Artillery. Artillery, yeah. right. I was trained as an infantryman and then as an artilleryman. Mm -hmm. That's your special unit? That was my special unit. Yeah. yeah. When I got to Korea, mm -hmm. right, they quickly, and probably for the first time, looked at my medical records. And the company commander that, and I don't even remember the company because I was only there a very short time, a couple of days discovered that I was blind in my right eye and he was afraid I would kill more of you people and us people than I would the enemy. Uh, so they transferred me to Seoul. And in Seoul, I, I, I was in the Finance Corps. Okay. Uh, finance Corps? Finance Corps. What is that? That's, uh, well, let's say where we pay the troops. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called the 21st Finance Corps. And it was part of Seoul City Command. I see. Okay, um, I was stationed right by the South Gate, um, which I couldn't even find when I went back to Korea in June last year. Uh, I don't know if the South Gate's still there, but I wanted to see it. And then uh, and I guess that was about... How was the shape of South Gate at the time? Oh, Seoul was just a desert. Uh, I mean, it was literally flat. Uh, the people lived in, you know, shacks. Uh, tin and paper mache and, and, and a really t very difficult mm -hmm. situation. Uh, of course, I, I, I had no idea what, what to expect when I got there, and that was uh, quite a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting. Um, and it was, I was a nondescript type of fellow in the Army, all right, uh, because I was in the Finance Corps. Uh, and I did that. For, I was there for 17 months. All right, I left. I left Seoul, Korea, uh, November, October 54. 54. October 54. Mm -hmm. After 17 months, right. And the only thing I really got involved in, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, military and guns, was when they repatriated the 100,000 Chinese troops through Seoul. And when they were shipping most of them to Taiwan, mm -hmm. uh, we all performed armed guard services over those people. Uh, other than that, I was really just a financier, mm -hmm. a banker, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, I must say, I, I enjoyed my time in the service. It was uh, interesting, interesting. I, I got to Japan a couple of times. Um, and uh, just lived, existed. Could you tell me a little bit more about what is the salary standard for each? Well, I can't rank? tell you for each. But uh, could you just tell me what a, is the sort of private, approximate? Back then, a private, private first class, right? Mm -hmm. One strike. Probably made $110 a month. With $110, what can you buy? Back then? Yeah. Well, oh. how, how powerful was that? Um, I would put it in this perspective. In the United States, when I did have a job, I made $25 a week. So okay. it wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. I survived on $25 a week in the United States. So almost the same as in the United States, yeah, right? Yeah, it was. Of course, you know, we did get what they call combat duty pay when you, because we were in a combat zone. Mm -hmm. And who knows, I might have had to be involved in combat whether I knew it or not, being only 18 miles from the, from the front line. I guess that's how far soul was from the front lines. Um, um, I, I, pardon my, my scanning the world here, I'm trying to back think. Um, a corporal probably made 135 hours a month. My recollection of a general mm -hmm. was oh, eighty thousand a year. Eighty thousand a year. That's my recollection. Indistinct, but roughly uh, eighty thousand dollars a year. That would have been General MacArthur type of person. Mm -hmm. Did you pay monthly or buy? No, we paid monthly. Monthly, and did you pay cash? Pay cash. Uh -huh. Yes, no, because. Uh, <laughs> There, were, there was no checking facilities for the troops. And of course, uh, back then, uh, well, you wouldn't remember because you weren't alive, 
I guess. Uh, we used what we called monopoly money. Oh. It was all paper money. Uh, a nickel was paper money. A dime was paper money. And the only coin that we had was a penny. Everything else was paper money in all different colors. So that actually the paper money was different from the real notes in used in the United States at the time. Oh yes, we didn't use okay. that, uh, U.S. currency at all. So you were able to buy things with that paper note, right? Right. And what do they? What did soldiers do with the money? Do they send the money back to their family? Were able to do that, or oh, could sure. you tell me? Well, a, a married individual, a married man, uh, of which there were many. Um, you, you you were married at no, the time? No, I wasn't married, no. I was footloose of fancy free. <laughs> <laughs> now, the married guys, they had to send back roughly, and, and they were forced to do it. it was, they didn't have much of a choice. But probably about 80% of their pay to their, to their family. Mm. I mean, their family had to survive somehow, and they couldn't let the, the guy gamble his money away in Korea or any place else for that matter. Um, but uh, that's, that's how they were paid, and uh, they could spend that money in the PX, the Post Exchange, which was a little department store. And uh, they had a lot of you know, commodities for these guys to buy. Um, cigarettes, if you use them, I don't, uh, but they were a dollar a carton, ten cents a pack. Now, how much are cigarettes? Eleven dollars a package. It depends on on where you buy it. Yeah, and you have to use a credit card sometimes. <laughs> I, find it, I find it strange, but that's the way it was. So they actually send mail out the paper money back to families in the United States, and they were able to change it. No, no, the government the would take it out of the pay. Oh, okay. Of these fellows, they would never see it. Okay, and the government sent the money on to the families. <clears throat> And uh, we 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 picked the money. We picked our money up to pay the troops in Tegu. We used to have to ride a freight train to Tegu, which was a lot of fun. Um, back then, the trains weren't very fast, you know. Uh, but it was interesting. You know, so I got, got got to see a lot of the countryside and, and the, uh, the rice fields and the people working in the rice fields and the, and the kids along the side of the track. Well, they were always kids. Um, and, uh, they, you know, they obviously wanted chocolate or oranges or anything that we could throw to. So it was interesting. So you were financier during the Korean War. Yeah. How powerful was that organization within the command post? Oh, well, it didn't have what I would consider to be a great deal of power, um, except that if we got mad at you, uh, we could hide your pay card and you wouldn't get paid and that gave us a little bit of power. <laughs> uh, but it wasn't a very powerful, it, 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 was, it was just a, a banking situation, to be candid. Um, a lot of money, a lot of money that went through. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously we, probably, we had to pay the troops, we paid the troops even when they were on the front line. You were there in Korea when the armistice was signed, July 27th of 1953. Yes. And next year will be 60 years anniversary of those. Right. Could you describe your sort of, what is it? What, how did you feel about it when you first heard about it? When I first arrived yeah. in Korea? I don't know, first heard about it. Heard about the armistice. Oh, when I first heard about the armistice? I immediately started applying to U.S. colleges. <laughs> and I, I mean, you asked me, that's what, that's what I did. I immediately sent applications to colleges. Wow. Because I, I, I dearly wanted to go to college. I, my family was not able to cope with the expense. So the GI Bill was a great benefit for me. And uh, I used the GI Bill all the way through my master's program. So that, that, that was a tremendous asset. For me, and for a lot of fellows, so that that was my first reaction to the armistice. Hey, it's over. It's almost over. We're gonna go home, and now I gotta get ready to proceed with my life. And believe it or not, I had a great desire to be married. So when I came home, I looked all over for girls. <laughs> In fact, my wife was a blind date, 
that I married to her for 55 years now. So we'll get back to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you leave for the United States from Korea? I left uh, Pusan. Oh. Hmm. It had to be early October. Oh, the, the of 1954. October, 1954. Mm -hmm. you know. So you all stationed in Seoul right. throughout the whole time yes. of your service. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Could you describe any painful, most painful or difficult memories that you had during your service and the happiest moments or could you want to share that? Well, some of my difficult times had to do with, with kids that, that you inevitably saw in the streets. I mean, they were waifs, they were uh, starving, you know, I mean, they didn't have much. Um, uh, it always tore at me, and, and uh, we hired we hired some of these children to be what we called housewives, and we had mothers' homes, and they were always very polite. I mean, extremely polite. I wish my kids had been that polite, <laughs> but I felt sorry for them. I, I you just had to feel sorry for them, and we did a lot for them. Um, we had one young kid, I remember, he was, oh, I guess seven, when we picked him up off, off the streets and so on. And we picked him up because he was stealing fruit from our mm -hmm. operation. So what we tried to explain to him was, you don't have to steal it, all you have to do is ask for it. Mm -hmm. But he didn't know that. But, um, and we took him in. And we came home. And it was things like that that bring tears to your eyes. A lot of nostalgia there. So they were some of the sadder moments of my, my career over there. Mm -hmm. um, joyful moments? Well, I don't know. I had four of a kind in a poker game and won a lot of money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We, we had, we had believe it or not, we had a, uh, a dance hall and a bar in the building we were in, in Seoul. We, we had taken over the water company's building. Uh, we had, then we fixed it all up and built a bar and a dance floor. And when the guys from the front lines came back on leave, we were, we were the place to go. Uh -huh. right? Ten cents for a Budweiser? Yeah. Can't beat it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cigarettes, ten cents a pack. Good lord. So there weren't many joyful moments. Or, I mean, when you, when you say joyful, you know, you jump up and down. I mean, it was a bad. I existed. Mm -hmm. I never had any complaints. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got my three meals a day. You know, donuts in the morning with coffee. <laughs> Did you write back to your family during the service? Oh, constantly. Constantly. Oh, yeah. I'm in fact, I don't know how many of the letters I have, but I'll bet you I have a hundred of them at home. And, you still uh, have that? Mm. You still have that letter? Yeah, that I wrote to my mother and my yeah. sister, oh yeah. Would you be willing to share that with us? Oh, sure. Oh, that, that would be great. Oh, well, sure. I mean, I don't know how many you want. I don't even remember what I said in these letters. I gotta be honest with you. So I haven't read them in, in 50 years. Right. But I'd be glad to do that. And uh, I could have my son scan those in and email them to you. Yeah. Okay. So when you left for the United States mm -hmm. around October of 1954, mm -hmm. you said that you applied for college. Did you, did you get into it, or what college did you go, and tell me about how you met with your wife. Okay, well, let's start with college, because I, when I got back, I, uh, if you're familiar with Long Island at all, uh, there's two colleges on Long Island, Hotspur University and, a, and Adelphi University. Mm -hmm. So I had the choice of either one. and. I chose Adelphi because I was able to go to, well, I had to go to night school because I had to work. Oh. Okay. Where did you work? Uh, IBM. IBM? Before anybody ever heard of IBM. 
IBM back then was, they made scales, butcher scales, Dayton scales. Really? Oh yeah. IBM was not, there were no computers back in right. 1955. Right when I, when I first go, went to work with them. Uh, and they had the, uh, the, the punch card systems, you know, the, mm -hmm. but they weren't computers. Uh, How much did they pay you? Um, $65 a week. That was my beginning salary. Mm -hmm. And quite candidly, I was only up at 55. But then they gave me a test and I got a hundred in their math test, so they gave me an extra ten. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a lot of money today, but back then, ten dollars paid my transportation, paid my laundry bill. Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so then I went to Adelphi University, and the reason I went there, I was able to graduate, undergraduate, my undergraduate degree at nine in four and a half years, which is almost the equivalent of going full time daytime. Yeah. And then I spent two and a half years for my master's program. What did you study? Finance. Why not? Why I mean, not? <laughs> I always, I always loved numbers, the manipulation of numbers. And uh, it just came naturally. So with IBM, I, 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 was, a, I was a full fledged accountant, not with them. I was there, what they call the risk manager of IBM. And the risk manager, essentially, you might call it the insurance manager. Right? But IBM was a big company. Mm -hmm. And I ran their insurance program. Well, I, I, I worked for them maybe 10 years before I became risk manager. Um, and I ran their program, and I, I went for 25 years. And I was responsible for worldwide insurance uh, obligations that we had. Uh, whether we bought it or not is at the point we had to measure the risk and determine the best route to take. In IBM. Right. Yeah. And uh, it, it was, uh, I, I loved it. It was a wonderful job. I dealt with NASA because our computers flew the space shuttles. Um, I dealt with, uh, um, um, what's his name? Oh, the FAA. Uh, you know, flight control airplane control, airport control, because our computers were all over the place back then. And I had met with these people and uh, argued with them all the time. It was a great deal of fun. I enjoyed it very much. Uh, one of my big issues with the federal government was they wouldn't indemnify IBM if, uh, if the space shuttle crashed on Chicago, for instance. And let's assume that our computer might have been at fault. Uh, you can't buy enough insurance in the world to pay all those people right. who, who might, might die, etc. Uh, so finally I, I was successful in getting them to go to Congress and Congress approved uh, indemnification of the IBM Corporation plus a lot of other corporations. And I enjoyed that type of opportunity. I, I love going to Washington, D.C. and I love going to Europe. But I, I traveled a lot. So how would you assess the impact of Korean War and your service in your life? Well, I think it woke me up. Um, I was a wet-nosed kid when I mean, you know, to be candid with you. Uh, kids of 18 today know, know more about the world and life than I knew when I was 24. You know, I, I was just a wet-nosed kid and I, I just learned an awful lot and I got to appreciate things more. You know, like uh, I, uh, there I am in Korea, and the, the people have nothing. I come home, and everybody was buying cars. That was before Hyundai, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was it was a different world. And you know, I, don't, I don't know how to define it in so many words. It was oh well. We'll go back to what I said before. It woke me up. It made me more appreciative. Have you done any business with Korea, Korean company? While you were serving in the I IBM? Oh, no. Uh, in fact, IBM, if they had a... I don't even think we had an office in Korea. Um, yet we had offices in every country I could think of, but I just don't remember any office in Korea. So no, I didn't do any business with, uh, with Korea. In the insurance business... Right, right. What was the reaction when you, uh, from your people that you knew, 
when you get back, got back to the United States from Korea? What Maybe. was the reaction of the people? How did they treat you? And Not very could well. You, could you comment about why the Korean War has been so unpopular, regarded as unpopular mm. in, in American publics? Mm. And Interesting question. I, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't give you one answer for that. But there's a million answers for that. Uh, it was unpopular because it wasn't a US, United States war. It was a United Nations war. Uh, I mean, uh, I'll use my own family as an example. I didn't think the United Nations had any any business telling uh, the world what to do. Uh, and that was the way it was back then. People weren't used to that type of situation. Uh, we have a government, let our government run us type of situation. And why not? Okay? I subscribe to that today. Um, I don't want the UN telling me what to do. No, the UN, I don't think. I'll leave it up to you. But people didn't, the people, it was almost like the equivalent of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, God. Military people were hated. I wasn't hated, but I was careful to avoid any spectacle. I didn't wear my uniform around the neighborhood. I didn't wear any military type of clothing. I really didn't talk about it. People didn't want to hear about it, and I have no idea what the sole reason was for that, but good old moms don't want their sons to go to war, you know. Mm -hmm. Have you have, uh, had a chance to go back and visit Korea? I went the, last June. Last June. That was the first time? That was the first time. How did you feel about it? Oh, nostalgic. Uh, I, I, my, my wife felt scared. <laughs> you went with your wife? Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, I take her everywhere. <laughs> uh, that's why I married her. And she was petrified. Um, I know that, you, that wasn't your question, but uh, she was scared stiff. And she was scared because of the stories about North Korea. Mm -hmm. She thought, sure, that she would have an atom bomb dropped on her head when she was there. For no other reason but she was there. So you went to the place where you... I tried very hard to find it. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the changes that oh, you witnessed there? I, I, I really didn't believe Seoul is a, <laughs> a concrete city. I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a mess. I was, I was flabbergasted. I had no idea. Coming out of, we, we landed obviously in Incheon, uh, and on the bus it was it was fun because as we were riding down the streets, we saw things that we were all familiar with: um, Dunkin' Donuts, um, Hamburg Heavens, you know, whatever hamburger place you wanted, uh, 7-Eleven, Trump Tower. I didn't know Trump had a tower there, but Trump Tower, and it was amazing to me. To me, uh, it looked like New York City, and the hotel, the hotel we were in, I can't remember the name of it, I, I, I apologize for that, mm -hmm. uh, it was magnificent, magnificent. Um, but, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't do it on the, but, 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 but I love the bathroom in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I think the toilets were made by Panasonic, if I remember. <laughs> And it would computerize, you know. <laughs> you push buttons and it's, water shot up all over the place. It, it, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they treated us, treated us royally. They really did. Um, everything was bing, bang, boom. I'm, I'm a very prompt guy. I, I like to, except today, I was running all the I know, I promise. But everything was right on time. It was amazing. The buses were there, the people were there, everything was there. And if it was raining, they had raincoats, they had umbrellas. Uh, they, you, got, you got the feeling you couldn't do enough for us. For us all right? And uh, we enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just a great deal of fun. Uh, unfortunately, it rained for five days that we were there. Uh, I guess the monsoon season came in a little earlier than I remembered. 
I went in June because I wanted it to be warm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were told one day, don't leave the hotel because it was raining so hard. Uh, and I thought, oh, gee, now that river's going to flood again. Because I remember the river flooding, the Han River. Back then, I remember the women washing the clothing on the rocks in the Han River, and the river going overflowing its banks, and all, all sorts of good stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, I enjoyed going back. It was nostalgic. I'd like to have seen more, but we were stymied because of the weather. Mm -hmm. uh, we did get the Pamela John. Uh, my wife was thrilled with that. They let her and they, well, they let all of us step into North Korea or on the other side of the table mm -hmm. to take pictures. So my wife was thrilled. She thought that was the moment of my life that she could go home and say, I was in North Korea mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. without being shot at. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we did have a good time. We enjoyed it. That's the oh, sea change. One thing I have to say, mm -hmm. when we were in the hotel, when I got into the hotel after the airport and the drive, I, I, I needed a beer so bad, so I opened up the, the little refrigerator, right? which is common to a lot of hotels. But I never looked at the price list. And I drank two Budweiser's. My wife says, you just drank $28 worth of beer, $14 of Budweiser's. <laughs> oh, oh my God. So the next day I get up, I went down to the lobby and I asked the fellow in the lobby, where's the nearest 7-Eleven? It was right around the corner from the hotel. I bought a six-pack for about $90 yes. and I replaced the two beers. Just a little interesting, because yeah. I'd like, yeah. uh, oh, half a bottle of wine was $90. On and on we go. It is one of the most expensive city in the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, you take... Because you protected us. And you be, we become successful in the economy, so right. we charge you a lot. Yep. I mean, gasoline alone was about $9 a gallon. Oh, gasoline <laughs> is triple yeah. of what you are paying here. Yeah. And, we're, and we're, we're really complaining, as you know, <laughs> at $4 a gallon. So you saw the sea change when you served during the Korean War mm -hmm. and when you visited mm -hmm. 2011. Oh, it was dramatic. It was like going from New York City to Mars and, and, and then back again. Yeah. How would you describe and characterize the legacy of Korean War veterans? The legacy? Yeah. In what, what? what is the importance of what you did and how do you think that it's been paid off? I'll tell you, uh, 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 in my perspective, okay, and I'm sure a lot of other fellows share the same perspective. As I look at, at South Korea and its progress over the last 60 years, I am flabbergasted. I mean, really flabbergasted. Come on, you what? Half the size of the state of Florida, or any of the 17th largest economy in the world, that's absolutely beyond imagination. And there's a lot of pride in me, although I wasn't the guy fighting on the front lines, but I still was there and I felt I contributed something. I mean, somebody had to do what I did. Uh, and and, and I, 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 just amazing. Amazing. I was. I, I was I, Hyundai, Hyundai automobile and Hyundai ships and the largest buildings in the world. I mean, you think about all those things and, and, and you have to be amazed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you knew anything about Korea back 60 years ago, when it was bombing, basically bombing. I mean, you weren't manufacturing anything back in 1951, 50. You were fighting the war. So. I'm taking up a lot of time. Here. No, 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 it's okay. So, so, do you have any message to the young generations in the United States and also for the Korea or any other young generations in countries about the war? You want to say anything to the future generations? Well, I, I, I wish that the, the current generations, all right, the more recent generations, I'll give you the last two or three knew more about history, uh, and history is everything, but <laughs> and in my life it is everything. Uh, they, a lot of children today, they, where is Korea? What Korean War? I had a young lady, uh, she couldn't be more than 10. She questioned whether or not I, I really was in the Korean War, or did I just wear that hat because I wanted to show off? 
Uh, how do you convince a tiny roll? I, I pulled out my, my, all my papers and I gave them my wallet and I showed them to her. I mean, they, they don't know much about Korea. Mm -hmm. but, um, my, my kids know a lot about Korea because I was there and I got all these pictures and, and things, mementos. I even have a I even have a love letter from a Japanese girl. Mm. Her name was Yonko McKee. I'll never forget her. She was a Shakespearean student in college. Nice lady, nice young lady. But being as it was, you know, they sent me home. Um, but how do I get how do I get it across to people that they should know more? I think they should know more about every war that we were ever involved in. Um, I'm sure your, your people know about all wars you were involved in. And I'm sure you never forgot the Japanese. <laughs> when, the, when they were there, they were the nicest people in the world. Mm. Um, how would I get them to learn more? Uh, this, this, uh, we don't have it out where I am on Long Island, but with the Talk America program, mm -hmm. I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, Tell America. Tell America, yeah. right. Um, great program. Mm -hmm. um, I was commander out there in Southampton of the of the local chapter. I, I couldn't get I couldn't get my guys to do anything. Uh, so Tell America just wouldn't happen out there, but that's a wonderful thing, going to the schools and showing the kids, telling the kids, talking to them, your life, life experiences so they can appreciate, maybe understand, maybe not appreciate it, but they can understand. Mm -hmm. Are you still belong to the Southampton chapter? No, I, I you don't. You belong to Long Island? No, I don't belong to any chapter. Oh, okay. Uh, long story. Mm -hmm. um, um, I got, I got, well, let me tell the story. I got aggravated because I couldn't get anybody to participate in anything, mm. so I resigned. I resigned. Mm. Uh, I gave up. But I come here. I love these guys. I will tell you, the people up here are so involved, so involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As I made a presentation in this morning, there are what, two point one million Korean War veterans still there in in the United States. Mm, that surprised me. I didn't think there were that many. Right, and I realized that there are only about fourteen thousand members in the uh, national chapter. Right. Do you have any idea how we can get more people involved and active? Well, I have some ideas. Whether well, they're good ideas, I don't know anybody's guess. They need to be, I call it advertising, more exposure. Mm -hmm. um, from the Great Period magazine, for instance, okay? Nice magazine, I enjoy it. All of us enjoy it, mm -hmm. right? We're the only ones that see it. Should you have it on a newsstand? I don't know. It might be worth a try. Uh, how, do you, how do you get press coverage? How do you get TV coverage? Mm -hmm. Uh, radio coverage and expose. Give me a, give me a, a, an analogy, if, if you will. It may not be a, the best analogy, but the Korean government invites us back, mm -hmm. and they invite us back out of an appreciation, and they pay a lot of bills. I paid the half the half the year fare, okay, and they paid everything else, and that was magnificent. Mm -hmm. All right. Nobody knows about it. Mm -hmm. I talked to Korean veterans who never heard of the program. Mm. It needs exposure. So somehow, somehow, this exposure has to be developed. Obviously, you know, it costs a lot of money to advertise on TV and all that sort of stuff, but maybe it would do the, Kore maybe the Korean government would do well to do a little advertising on American TV. I don't, I, I don't mind hearing the Korean government advertising and showing off. Hey, we invite your veterans, well, we invite all veterans back. Um, we were there with 20, 20 fellows from Turkey last year. My wife loved them. She was having a ball with these guys. She, they wanted to dance all the time. They were crazy in a nice way. So the Korean government should have, you know, I, I just can't imagine why they never exposed that program 
to the population. More actively, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Sure. I mean, look, you know, Bill O'Reilly, I don't know why he doesn't like South Korea, but he always has a, gri a gripe about South Korea. Really? Donald Trump, he, he has a big chip on his shoulder about South Korea. I'm not, I don't know why. I happen to think that it has to do with our troops being on the 30th parallel, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think Donald Trump, was, uh, and I might be misspeaking, but I think Donald Trump's uh, annoyed that the Korean government doesn't pay the bill for our troops to be there. Well, look, <laughs> you know, we got 25,000 guys here. Um, I don't, I don't mind paying a bill for them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're protecting something worth protecting. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know what else I can tell you about that, but I think it needs more exposure. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, maybe you could even write a, write a letter to Bill O'Reilly uh, as a representative of the Korean government, so, you know. First of all, you, you'd have to find out exactly what his gripe is, and then maybe you could help him understand. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to tell your friends about this Korean War Veteran Digital Memorial and let them join? If what, the this program? Yeah. Well, I, I could talk to them. We don't have many fellows out there who belong to the organization, but I, I certainly know, know them. I can talk to them, sure. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you said that you would go out to any place to interview, mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of, you know what, I'll call it bashful. Why do these fellows, they're reluctant. Oh, I don't want to be, I don't want to be exposed. I don't know. Neither do I, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a bashful guy. <laughs> Not really. Not really. Not really. No.